Hi, I'm Christine. I'm the executive chef at Kimika, and today I'm going to show you how to use every style of Japanese knife. I only own Japanese knives at this point. And to be honest, I don't actually see very many professionals using anything but Japanese knives these days. I'd be very surprised if you buy a Japanese knife and you don't continue to want another one after you buy your first one. A knife should last you a lifetime, so it's important to take care of your knives like they're your best friend. These are the basic tools for knife care. A knife roll, sharpening stones. And this is a saya, a wood cover made out of magnolia wood. One of the first things you learn is that you would never give your knife away to anybody to sharpen. You have to do it yourself. Make sure you soak the stones in water. These are not oil stones. We only sharpen Japanese knives with wet stones. Using any kind of sharpening wheel or, or mechanism really just shaves off too much knife. So we're gonna do this Western style petty here. You have to always make sure you soak these for at least half an hour before you're using them. This is gonna be at 70 degrees. You're gonna go this way, and then 30 degrees on this side. Then you're gonna to wanna to wash it off and make sure it's really dry because that water on there will eventually rust. And the last thing that you, you might use is a little bit of oil. And the oil will protect the knife from oxidizing, rusting, or any of those things. But these really are the tools that will allow you to care for and hopefully really welcome these knives into your, your cooking family. All right, let's get started. This knife is a Gyuto. When people ask me what knife you should get, a Gyuto 8-inch chef's knife is the place to start. It's the all-purpose knife. So something that we do a lot at the restaurant and we do a lot of at home is using onions. So cut the ends off just a little bit off of the butt, and we wanna peel the onion first, so we're gonna cut this. The knife has a nice bolster, so it helps you peel the skin off of the onion. You could use your hands, but it's nice to use this bolster on the butt of the knife. It's lighter, it's thinner. This doesn't feel unsafe when I'm doing this. I'm really guiding it, and I'm putting my hand up for a little bit further on the knife so I can really control it. You don't want to use a knife that's too big that feels a little too heavy. And that's where this thinner knife really makes a big difference because it's much easier for you to slice the onion thinner and at a faster pace. Paper thin red onions. We could do a dice of the onion. You can see you have this precise, nice red onion dice now. And that's the Gyuto. This is a Santoku. Santoku means three virtues, and the three virtues of this knife is that it can cut fish, meat, and vegetables. It is another one of our all-purpose knives for like julienning, maybe doing some potatoes, and carrots. Everyone has carrots in their kitchen. You can really use this up and down motion and really utilize the bolster that's a little bit taller, and you're just doing a very up and down motion instead of a rocking motion like you would do on the Kyoto. Another cut that's great to do with carrots is called a rangiri, where you're essentially rolling, just one knife cut down, you roll, and you keep going. So there are these three shaped, twisted cuts. If you're not super skilled with your knife skills, this is a great knife to start using. It's a little bit more compact, and it works really well at home, because obviously your kitchen is a lot smaller than the kitchen I have at work. It's the perfect knife for a New York apartment. If you've got the little tiny cutting board that's about this big, Perfect just for that size. And that's the Sentoku. This is a Kiritsuke, a knife that is traditionally only used by the executive chef. The ultimate example of Japanese knife making craftsmanship. And this comes from the tradition of samurai sword making. So this is my kitchen sword. So today, we're gonna use this single-sided beveled knife and we're gonna slice this tomato and it just cuts through like nothing and it really falls off the beveled side of the knife and it's multi-purpose so I can work on some vegetable cutting and prep a piece of fish for you and a piece of meat. That's the Kiritsuke. This is a Bunka. It is also an all-purpose knife and it's very delicate. For instance, we're gonna cut some Japanese eggplant here. It's so delicate and thin and light, I can really just slice through these things very quickly. The bunka has got this slanted tip, and this is why sometimes you'll pick to use this knife versus like a nakiri. So as you can see, we've cut this eggplant in half, and we're just gonna use this and not go all the way through, 
but we're just scoring, putting the tip in maybe like a quarter inch to half an inch down and doing these cross hatch marks. And this will allow the eggplant to cook faster and you'll get this really beautiful design. We also can do that with mushrooms, like these king oyster mushrooms here. It just slices through it so quickly. And then here you're gonna do the same scoring and you can put these in a hot pan, some oil, maybe finish with a little butter, you get this one side super golden brown and think about it at a dinner party, how cool would this be for you to have a bunch of these on a platter? People would be very impressed. It's not too long. It's so light and maneuverable. It's a really nice knife to be able to just kind of slide right in. And that's the bunka. This is a petty knife. Petty meaning petite in French. Generally speaking, they're five to six inches long. And it's really great for cutting smaller vegetables or herbs or small fruits and any kind of detailed work that you wanna do. For instance, I'll show you here. It's really awesome for peeling garlic. So if you notice here, again, you've got the blade that goes all the way down to the heel. So you can use the heel to help you peel some of the skins off and really use the heel here to get between the skin and the garlic. And we've got our nice piece of garlic. And so if we wanna do some sliced garlic, so let's say we're making some linguine and clams at home and you can slice your garlic and then you're gonna mince it. It's small, it's light, it's handy, it's perfect. Another thing it would be great for is for using shallots. So for some fine detail work here, if you wanna do thinly sliced shallots, this is the perfect knife to do that. And there you have it, some nice brunoise shallot, and this is your petty knife. This is a paring knife. The smallest of the knives that you'll find, a beautifully handcrafted Japanese knife, hard Japanese steel, wood handle. I use it most for cleaning small things like these beautiful small radishes I got. I really use a lot of it in my hand like this so we can clean off the tails and clean off the tops. You can use it for making sure if there's like a little dirt here. I don't actually like to peel any of my vegetables. I try not to do that at all. I try to scrub them. So you're really utilizing uh, the whole vegetable and there's no waste. Another application that I use a paring knife for a lot is mushrooms, like these beautiful chanterelles from Canada. So here I'm just gonna cut the butt off and then very delicately, I'm gonna scrape a fine layer of the chanterelle off. And that's really what paring knives are for, is for the very delicate work that you're gonna have. And that's the paring knife. This is a nakiri. A nakiri is a square vegetable cleaver. It's great for cutting open squash, potatoes, and things like that, because these hand-hammered dimples here are called suchime. And the purpose of them is, not only is it very beautiful, but it, when you're cutting these hard vegetables, it allows it to not get stuck on the side of the blade. The balance of it is great for putting weight down on these harder skinned vegetables. We're gonna cut this squash open. We've got this kabocha here. You really need a knife with a little bit more weight to it to get through the hard skin. It's so easy here. Do it with one hand. I can do it with hands like this. It's great. We've got this beautiful purple sweet potato. Just cut right through. We want to make some sweet potato fries. Get the next one. You see how the potato just falls right off of that edge? It's because we've got these dimples here. We could do a few simple knife cuts. And it's also great, this square blade, the larger surface allows you to move things around a bit faster. And that's the nakiri. This is an usaba, which translates to thin slice. It is a single edged vegetable knife and it is really used for high level Japanese decorative knife work. For example, I'm gonna show you this cut that we do for the cucumbers that you see in sushi rolls. It's a great knife for it because of the single edge. It's got the blade all the way to the heel, so then you're controlling the knife and turning through the cucumber. And you're just rolling and doing thin slices of cucumber. Rolling until you get all the way down to the core. It can take a lifetime to master these knife cuts. And then we've got to the core. And we can then use it to finish the julienning. And again, there's no rocking, it's just a straight down motion. 
up and down to get a nice even julienne here. And these are your little thin strands of cucumbers that you see in sushi rolls. This is your usaba. This is a demo. It is a single beveled Japanese knife with a thicker spine used for fish butchery and meat butchery. And it has a lot of weight to it so you can crack through some of the bones. This is a nice one and a half pound branzino. And we're gonna use kitchen shears to cut through the fins here on the fish. And next, we're going to cut the head off. So here, the weight of the deba is really important. You can literally just cut all the way through. See your head. So now we're gonna take the rest of this and we're gonna take the fillets off. And it's super sharp, so you're gonna be able to get through very smoothly. Fish is very delicate and it can tear very easily. So it's very important to have a super sharp knife. And because it's single beveled, it will slide right down the backbone of the fish very easily. So here we've hit the backbone. What we do here is we cut through the bones here in the belly, and then we'll take them off after. And we go all the way through. So you've got one fillet here, and then we'll do the other side, and just right all the way down the fish until you hit the backbone. Then you just cut through the rib cage, and you've got your second fillet here. Now we're going to clean up the rest of the fillet. Here you've got the rib bones that we've cut through with the deba. So you're just gonna wanna take the edge of the knife and get underneath these bones. And it goes through the skin very easily as well. And there you go. This deba here is a six and a half inch deba. They do come in different sizes. I've used one that's 10 inches long. It really depends on what type of fish you're butchering. So obviously this branzino is on the smaller side, so we have one of the smaller debas. And that's the deba. This is a yanagi. Yanagi translates to willow leaf. It is a long, thin, single-edge knife. You can use it for slicing sashimi or crudos or any smoked salmons or any smoked fish like that. You can really see the lineage here of the samurai sword making. It is long and thin, so you're using the knife and the length of the blade to do very long cuts, so you're, again, not tearing the fish at all, and it slides very nicely off of the single beveled edge. So here we're gonna clean up this salmon, this wild king salmon that we have here a bit, and then we're gonna do a few slices of sashimi. You can also use the yanagi to help skin the fish and really utilize these long tears that it has. And it's really these long strokes that you're doing with the yanagi. So here we have the belly that we're gonna make a few sashimi slices from. It still has the skin on it, so we're gonna take the skin off using the yanagi. This yanagi is 10 and a half inches, and they do come in different sizes. So again, with the larger fish and the more skilled you are, the longer a yanagi you'll be able to handle. And we wanna use this very sharp single edge knife so we're not gonna tear the fish. And it's really just smoothly gliding through the salmon belly. It's also very important to wipe off your knife in between slices because then it will decrease any friction that you'll have when you're slicing. And it keeps everything neat. So here we're just gonna slice this piece off. And these long slicing motions is what is important here for the sashimi. And you really use the whole blade, starting from the bottom and moving all the way to the top. And it's almost just gliding with it. It's one nice solid stroke, almost like using a sword. This is a yanagi. This is a kakimuki. Kaki is oyster in Japanese, and this is the Japanese oyster knife. The Japanese oyster knife has a much sharper point than the Western style oyster knives, and it's very sleek and very simple functionality. It's got a wood handle, and it fits perfectly in your hand, and honestly, very little curvature. It's pretty much this very sharp piece of metal in this very simplistic piece of wood. The handle is a little bit thicker than the Western and French style oyster knives as well, and it really gives you a little bit more leverage and ability to control the knife a bit more. So you see this very, very sharp knife here. We're just gonna use this point and try and get that into the hinge of the oyster. Get that popping sound, that means you've been able to get the oyster open. And then you wanna take the knife, you can use the sharp part to cut the muscle, and then you've got your oyster. And you can also use this flat part here to help scrape and detach the bottom muscle of the oyster from the shell. 
and then use it to flip the oyster over. And there you have your perfect summertime oyster on the half shell. And that's your kakamuki. This is a sujihiki. Sujihiki translates to pulling the mussel. So this is a Japanese meat slicer. The angle that the sujihiki is generally sharpened to is a bit steeper, so you get really thin cuts with this. It is designed after European style, but it is thinner and it's made out of a harder steel, so it retains its edge even longer. An edge is super important when you're slicing cooked meat because you don't want to tear the delicious steak that you're about to eat. We have here a dry aged ribeye. We're gonna slice off the gristle, which is the fattier, more marble part of the ribeye. And then we have the other side. And this is the eye of the ribeye. So this is the part where we need the knife to be super sharp. So it's like you can slice the meat almost paper thin. So again, like any fish, these long slices. And it's just one long motion, which is why the length of the sujihiki is important. You're not rocking back and forth. So you're just doing one straight motion, almost like a sword going through the beef. The knife really has to fit well in your hand because you're really using very little motions, just one long turn. Generally speaking, when you're using your slicer for the first time, you probably want a shorter one because you don't want a blade that's too long that you can't control it. I love the super sharp edge because as you can see, it's really just slicing through these beautiful clean cuts of the steak. There's no tears and we've already had a really good solid crust from the sear and the length of the blade is long. so. It's easy to pick up the other pieces and move it to a plate. And there is your beautifully sliced ribeye. You can use a sujihiki also for fish. I actually really like using a sujihiki to cut scallions because right here, the height of the sujihiki is a little shorter and I can get really paper thin slices of scallions. And that's the sujihiki. This is a honeski. A honeski is a Japanese boning knife. It is different from a European style boning knife in that it has got a triangle here and a tip in the front and it's got very little flex. Honeski is the knife of choice when you break down a chicken. So here, I'll show you how to use the honeski. We're gonna take the tail off first. It is sharp enough that you can just cut right through the bone. And then we'll take the wings off and it cuts right through the joints and the weight of the handle helps you have more leverage pushing down. Just cuts right through. The tip, you can get into smaller places or it can help you puncture the skin without tearing the meat. Also, the angle of this blade and the weight of the handle really allows you to kind of push this direction. So you're kind of pushing the weight against you, working the knife in a different direction you don't see very often. And we're pushing through the skin. And then now we're gonna use the tip to get through that hip joint and that oyster, and then you can just kind of pull the rest of the, the chicken off. So we do the same on the other side, using the tip, pointing it down, pulling this away, and using the weight of the knife and the heavier handle to really use it against gravity. You can use the tip here to get in between the joint to cut the cartilage, and you've got your legs. Using the tip again, we're gonna take the drumstick joint here, and on this side as well and really pinpointing where that joint is and getting the blade right in, the, in between it. Gizzard. So now I'm gonna continue to use this heel of the knife. Again, European style knives would not, bony knives would not have this triangular shape or even a heel that you can do this with. So we really use this edge to kind of get through some joints on specific parts of this chicken as we debone this thing. This is a pretty cool technique that I learned when I was learning how to make yakitori in a very different style of what we call airline chicken breast. But I'm gonna use this heel and go all the way up this way. It's very uncommon to cut things away from you. You normally cut things towards you. But this technique I learned from a yakitori master. So we're gonna go all the way up. We're gonna use the tip to kind of cut this little piece of silver skin and pull this off and you've got your airline chicken breast here. Here, what we have left is America's favorite part of the chicken, the chicken tender. Yeah! Just think about it, one order of chicken tenders, how many chickens does it take to make one order of chicken tenders? Again, we're gonna use the heel of the Honeski, 
trim this little piece of fat off and go all the way up the rib cage, flip this over, use the tip here to separate it from the shoulder, and we can just pull this off. And we've got your second airline chicken breast. And then we're gonna use the tip to get underneath the chicken tender to release it from the rib cage and pull that through. There's your other tender. So right now we can make an order of two tenders. Yeah! You can take the shoulder blade off here, which actually is probably one of my favorite skewers. And you just have to break this joint. Got your shoulder. So it's like a nice moist piece of white meat. We've got chicken tenders, we've got your breasts, you've got your legs and your thighs. I mean here you can separate it again just using the weight of the knife and just getting through the joint. So you've got your drumstick here, you've got your chicken thigh here, and there's your chicken. And that's the Haneski. This is a honkotsu. This is really made for taking meat that's on the bone, whether it's the whole animal or primal cuts. So if you have like hanging meats, you're really kind of carving the, the parts of the animal that you want out. What's really unique about this knife is that it, again, it, there's no flex to it at all. And the shape, if you look at it here, there's no heel on this knife at all, which is great for cleaning, um, let's say membrane off of the meat so it doesn't get snagged on the heel. But this is really the only Japanese knife that doesn't have a heel. We're not gonna do a whole pig today, but we've got a whole bone-in pork shoulder, and I'm gonna show you how to use the honkotsu to break down this pork. So here we are going through some of the natural muscles of the pork. We're really using the tip to help us guide and break through the different muscles within the shoulder. With the lack of a heel, I'm not getting caught on anything. I can get really close to the muscles that I'm trying to identify and to the next to the bone. So here I'm carving around this big bone of the pork shoulder and really allowing the tip to kind of be the guide for where I'm gonna pull the, the knife to. Right, it's, it's thicker and heavier, so you, you're not afraid of like chipping the tip or ruining the tip, let's say on a, like a petty um, knife where it's a little bit softer and a bit more delicate, but you're able to really get close to the meat and really carve out where you need to go. And then it's a real extension of your hand and it's thin and small so you can maneuver at different angles as well. So you can follow the curvature of the bones. And then here, I just need to carve out this area so I'm really gonna use the tip to kind of like draw and cut out this little last piece of bone. You can really get underneath the bone here. There's no resistance at all and you're just using the knife to guide you to, to where the natural break of the bone is. And then the tip just kind of, just separates the pieces of muscle and cartilage from the bone. So we've got this piece over here. So we've got the bone out. It's also really thin. So again, like here we have the, this little piece of skin left. If we wanted to take that off, and like I was saying to you before, it's very good for cleaning meat. So at times, like let's say you get a steak and sometimes there's just a little bit more fat, you can use this tip to just go right underneath and cut it off. So you don't have to do some kind of weird angling or anything like that. This knife is designed to be breaking down whole pigs and hanging meats. So we could use this one knife to break down an entire pig. And that's the honkotsu. And that's how you use every style of Japanese knife. We may not have used every style of Japanese knife, but you get the idea.